Welcome back, dear viewers. Uh, you're watching Nile Cruz on Nile TV uh, International. And in this topic uh, of discussion, we're going to be talking about the pivotal role that the uh, Azhar Institution is playing in combating the COVID-19 or the coronavirus outbreak, uh, which has not only been uh, spread here in Egypt, but across the globe. And uh, the uh, Azhar is working uh, relentlessly to uh, raise awareness among the general public about the, uh, uh, the, the hazards of the coronavirus outbreak and also uh, giving tips uh, to how not to contract the virus and uh, to shed more light on this topic. We're most delighted to be joined by Dr. Hussein Din Alem, and he's a member of Al-Azhar Fatwa Global Center to tell us more about the efforts of Al-Azhar. A very warm welcome, uh, Dr. Hussein. Thanks so much for joining us on Nile Cruz. Uh, thank you so much for having me, and it's always a pleasure being with you here. It's a pleasure, sir, to have you with us in today's episode thank of um, Nile Cruz, of course. So we start off uh, our questions today by asking you, of course, that there are ongoing efforts by Al-Azhar University yeah. uh, uh, to raise the awareness uh, yeah. towards the novel uh, coronavirus, awareness of the people, awareness of um, the children, awareness of the students at Al Azhar University, awareness of the entire world, because uh, Al Azhar, as a very important institute, does not only uh, look uh, at Egypt, but we, uh, of course, send a religious course all over the world. Yes. Indeed, it's, it's a very important uh, point to start with, and I really appreciate it. Uh, let me start by, by saying that, yes, Al-Azhar is fully aware of uh, the critical time uh, that uh, not only Egypt is going through, but uh, all of our global human family uh, is uh, experiencing. And it is uh, for this, uh, since uh, the, uh, the reports that came to highlight the hazards of COVID-19, uh, Al-Azhar, uh, has been working around the clock uh, first by following all the reports uh, that coming uh, that are coming from the world health organization and also from uh, the health uh, ministry here in egypt and all uh, concerned uh, health uh, authorities across the globe and also in an effort to make sure that uh, the members of al azhar fatwa global center are up to date with all uh, these developments uh, we have been uh, providing uh, briefings uh, and uh, information session for the members so that they are fully aware of all the details surrounding uh, the, uh, the coronavirus or COVID-19 and the developments of uh, the uh, epidemic into, uh, an, uh, into, uh, into a pandemic. So in this regard, uh, Al-Azhar has been doing its best uh, through not only the traditional or the conventional uh, means of uh, raising awareness but including uh, the social media and the alternative uh, means of communication uh, El Azhar is available now on all of these uh, platforms to uh, receive questions and to provide uh, the answer to all of them uh, Dr. Hussain, also, uh, Al Azhar Fatwa Global Center seeks to address the uh, problems of the people on daily lives. Uh, yes. To what extent this is valid? Uh, as a matter of fact, like I mentioned, uh, Al Azhar, uh, for instance, when it comes to COVID 19, uh, it has been highly concerned uh, with what is going on, and this is why we have been following all of these reports and being there to receive the questions of the people and to provide uh, the, the, the necessary knowledge that the people need to be aware of. Uh, and uh, this is why, for instance, I can mention here in this context uh, the very uh, swift reaction uh, in this regard uh, of Al-Azhar's uh, authority uh, of senior scholars. How is it? It was so quick uh, to announce that it is permissible uh, to suspend temporarily uh, the holding of uh, congregational prayers, including uh, the Jum'a ah or the Friday prayer, uh, as a precautionary measure in order to prevent uh, the spread of uh, COVID-19. And it highly uh, urged all individuals to abide by uh, the instructions and uh, the health uh, uh, guidance that are provided by the competent health authorities in this regard in order to avoid uh, the spread of COVID-19. Sir, uh, of course, um, uh, in Islam, it's haram uh, or uh, religiously forbidden uh, for those, of course, with coronavirus or any virus or any um, uh, mean of illness 
to, uh, of course, uh, attend any means of prayers yeah. uh, that yeah. takes place um, yeah. uh, Indeed, within yeah. a crowd. Yeah. Um, uh, um, yeah, because, of course, he does he harms others yes. or she harms others. Yes. Yeah. Uh, how does Islam consider the well-being of humans as a priority? Sir? Indeed, this is a very important question. And uh, before answering the question itself, I'd like to highlight uh, a very important point, and that's the, the importance of showing solidarity amongst each other at, at, at a time like the one that we are going through because we have been noticing and we have already observed that some people experience some sort of bullying uh, because of the fact that um, it is highly possible that they could have uh, contracted the virus or that they are already infected with uh, the disease. Medically speaking, anyone could be infected with the disease, but it is not necessarily showing its symptoms uh, on, on this individual. So it is important for us to show this sense of solidarity and not to discriminate uh, against uh, anyone. Uh, with that being said, of course, Islam is really cl clear about this, and it is even a point of agreement among all uh, the schools of uh, Islamic jurisprudence that there are five major uh, basic principle objectives or aims that all the rulings of the noble Islamic Sharia and the Islamic jurisprudence aim to protect and to safeguard and among them uh, are life and deen or faith and religion and of course both of them are of a paramount importance and it is for this fact that we give the precedence to protecting the, the human life because without the human being there is no deen or is, there is no faith or there is no religion to be observed. So all the, all the necessary measures uh, that are being taken in order to prevent uh, the spread of uh, COVID-19, all of these measures are in line uh, with the noble Islamic uh, jurisprudence and the one who explores the Islamic jurisprudence and the teachings of Islam uh, on this regard find it very obvious and very uh, evident that Islam even uh, is uh, a barrier of torch uh, in this regard and in taking and recommending and urging all individuals to take the necessary measures uh, that would uh, prevent the spread of uh, such a pandemic. Yes. Uh, Dr. Hussam, also if you can walk us through the recommendations yeah. or the teachings of Prophet Muhammad, uh, mm, peace yes. be upon him, yeah. uh, when it comes to addressing uh, epidemics yes. or pandemics. Yeah, this is also a great point that I'd like to talk about. And let me uh, highlight here uh, the, the fact that how it was very fascinating, how uh, the global media uh, has been uh, speaking of how is it the Prophet of Islam, Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, he has already spoken uh, of uh, measures, practical measures that would prevent uh, the spread of uh, pandemics and this has been uh, brought uh, uh, also and it even went to viral on social media. Uh, so for instance, among the, the teachings of the Prophet in this regard, that it is not permissible uh, for a person infected with any disease to uh, interact closely uh, and not to observe social, uh, the, the social distance with uh, other people. And obviously, uh, the reason is to prevent the spread of uh, such uh, diseases or communicable diseases. Mm -hmm. Another uh, teaching and statement of the Prophet, peace be upon him, in this regard uh, is a statement uh, that revolves around the idea of quarantine and observing uh, medical quarantines, as he is reported, uh, peace be upon him, to have said that whenever you hear of its outbreak, i.e. A, a, a plague or any uh, such pandemic uh, in, in a certain uh, place or a certain part of the world, don't move to it. And if you are in a place where it has to start it, to spread, don't leave it, which is, again, like I have mentioned, goes in line with the idea of uh, observing a quarantine. So my point here is Islam is very clear and we can clearly see that the daily practices uh, of Islam when it comes to cleanliness are vital nowadays uh, to be observed by all human beings in order to lead a healthy lifestyle.
Okay, sir, as we uh, approach the holy month of Ramadan yeah. in, a, yeah. in a few days, of course, yeah. um, uh, I'd like to ask you um, <coughs> uh, about um, yeah. the, pande the pandemic that's yes. taking place yeah. and how is Ramadan this year going to be different than yeah. all yeah. our lives yeah. or all the Ramadans that we yeah. witnessed, unfortunately, yeah. in the past. In the past, it wasn't unfortunate, the Ramadan that's coming. How are we going to witness? How are we going to yeah. deal? Yeah. Are we going to be staying locked down at home? Yeah. Uh, I yeah. see what you mean. I, I highly appreciate uh, bringing uh, up uh, this point. And let me uh, sh share here with you and all our dear viewers a piece of good news and a glad, a glad tiding. Uh, according to a statement from the Four Peace Peponem, that whenever a believer is accustomed to conducted, conducting or carrying out or performing a, a religious practice or an act of worship, and then something out of their hands would come to prevent them from carrying it out, they will still get the reward for it. So. Here, this is very important to ponder and to think about that this is out of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that even uh, though we are experiencing such critical times, this will not harm or be detrimental to the rewards of observing the fasting of Ramadan and all the rituals like the Taraweeh prayer or the night prayer and all the gatherings and the family gatherings. So, we don't need to worry about this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most generous. And furthermore, as a matter of fact, with observing these necessary measures to prevent the spread of COVID-19 or to flatten the curve, as a matter of fact, the believer attains double of the reward. First, by their intention of uh, conducting or performing these acts, acts of worship and by abiding by or for abiding by these necessary measures out of the intention that we are doing so to protect humanity and to protect the life of every human being. So this is also another piece of good news to be added here uh, in this yes. context that we don't need to feel disheartened uh, for the fact that we are missing out on, uh, on the rewards. No, this is not the case. L rather, we need to uh, adopt a healthy, optimistic approach and perspective and to utilize and to get the best out of these current circumstances to connect more closely and to draw nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also to our families and our loved ones and our extended family and of course this is possible nowadays with social media and with all the technologies available yes. so my point is it's very important to maintain a healthy optimistic uh, approach as to all what is going on and to maximize the benefits that we can get out uh, of sir, this. Sir, speaking about health, uh, is it, uh, 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 is it uh, acceptable to fast with the COVID-19? This is a question <laughs> that has come to the yeah, minds yeah. of many yes. as um, the, it's an immunity-related uh, yes. uh, virus. Yeah. Uh, if you can tell us more. Yeah, I, I totally understand that. And it's very critical to, uh, to highlight uh, this question. And you have been receiving it a lot, as a matter of fact, at Al-Azhar Fatwa Global Center. Let me start here at the very outset uh, in answering this question by stating very clearly that yes, all the teachings of Islam pay great deal of consideration to the protection of the human life. And as long as there is any threat that would cause or pose a jeopardy or a hazard to the human life, this constitutes a necessity and thus all the necessary measures are to be taken in order to protect the life of the human being. So with that being said, if it is medically proven and scientifically established that observing the fasting of, the, of Ramadan would make it probable, probable or increase the susceptibility, the susceptibility mm -hmm. or the probability of being infected with the disease, in this case it is totally permissible to postpone the fasting of the months of Ramadan and to do this later. Mm -hmm. However, it's very important to mention that this has not been the, 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 the case so far and thus, unless it is 
so but established. Is collaborating with the the medical all authority. medical but co- there is, authorities. Sir, there, there is a, there, there is an there there is a fatwa that took place already that says that Muslims will be will be fasting in Ramadan in the coming Ramadan. Uh, this is a fatwa and that the, 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 the coronavirus uh, and the, the coronavirus is not a reason for Muslims not to fast. Uh, this, thank you so much for bringing this up. The fatwa that has been issued by Azhar is as follows. If it is medically proven mm-hmm. and it is scientifically established that fasting would cause getting infected or increases even the probability of getting infected, thus it becomes permissible not to fast. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, it is not permissible and every Muslim needs to, ob- to observe the fasting of the month of Ramadan. Yeah. Yes, uh, we really do appreciate uh, your insight, uh, Dr. Uh, Hussam al-Din uh, Alam, uh, a member of Al-Azhar Fatwa Global Center. We really do appreciate uh, your insight Thank as you. always, and we hope that uh, this crisis will come to an end soon yeah, and uh, uh, we, uh, Egypt will uh, overcome this crisis. Inshallah. Thank you so much. Sir, Thanks so much for having us. me and all the pleasure. Uh, dear viewers, stay with us. We still have more here coming up here on Land Cruise and don't go away.